Hello everyone. In this video we will talk about the various blood components that we use for transfusion. So the first component is whole blood. Whole blood when we see the volume of the packet it consists of 450 ml of whole blood. The packet consists of RBCs, platelets as well as plasma and they are used for increasing hemoglobin as well as plasma volume. In one packet of PRBC or packed red blood cells, there is a volume of 300 to 350 ml. It consists of only red blood cells. It is stored at a temperature of 1 to 6 degrees Celsius. It is used for increasing hemoglobin, which might be required in shock and in anemia. So, one transfusion of one packet of PRBC increases hemoglobin by 1 gram per deciliter. And it increases hematocrit by 3%. Random donor platelets consist of 50 to 70 ml of platelets in one packet. And single donor platelets consist of 200 to 400 ml of platelets in one packet. Platelets are stored at a temperature of 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. Now since they are stored at a warmer temperature, their shelf life is really less. You can only use it for 5 days after collecting it and it is used for uh, dengue and shock conditions like dengue which is severe dengue and also used for shock and one packet of random donor platelets will increase platelets by 5000 to 10,000 per microliter of blood and one packet of single donor platelets will increase platelets by 30,000 per microliter of blood. In fresh frozen plasma you have 200 to 250 ml of fresh frozen plasma in one unit and it consists of all of your coagulation factors along with protein S, protein C and antithrombin. It is stored at a very lower temperatures of minus 18 to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Its shelf life is only one year and it is used for conditions like shock. It is also used for coagulation factor deficiency and conditions like hemophilia A and B. It can be used for both hemophilia A and B. And transfusion of one packet of fresh frozen plasma will increase coagulation factors by 2%. In cryoprecipitate, you have 10 to 15 ml per packet. It consists of fibrinogen, factor 8 and von Willebrand factor. Remember, factor 9 is missing in cryoprecipitate. Cryoprecipitate does not have factor 9. It is also stored at negative temperatures of minus 30 degrees Celsius. So, it can be stored for one year. It is used for hemophilia A, fibrinogen deficiency and wall millibrand disease, but it cannot be used for hemophilia B since it does not consist of factor 9 and factor 9 is what is deficient in hemophilia B. The shelf life of PRBC will depend on which medium it is stored in. So if it's stored in acid citrate dextrose or citrate phosphate dextrose medium, it will last for 21 days. The shelf life will be 21 days. Whereas if it is stored in citrate phosphate dextrose adenine medium or CPDA medium, it will last for 35 days. Addition of adenine to this medium will increase the shelf life for which it can be stored. In saline, adenine, glucose, mannitol or SAG-M medium, it can be stored for a period of 42 days. One thing to be remembered in case of transfusion in severe hemorrhagic shock or severe hypovolemic shock is that when we are transfusing PRBC, platelets and fresh frozen plasma should also be transferred in a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1. That is, for every one packet of PRBC, one packet of platelets and one packet of FFP should also be transfused. 